Assalamu alaikum and good morning. My name is Farha Muhammad and I'm the co-author with Sheikh Anwar Sheikh Abdul Rahim. And our paper today is titled Robust Governance as Catalyst of Digitalization of the Human Capital. Okay, bismillah. Uh, this study actually was mooted from the idea that in this field that we're studying, which is oil and gas, uh, you know, as the oil price is rapidly declining, so how do we as a company do whatever cost cutting uh, to save a budget? And then how do we optimize whatever manpower that we have, whatever resources that we have, you know, uh, and then how, uh, what is the best way to actually look at the sustainability of the company itself? Okay. So the scope of governance actually we is is actually a very flexible thing, okay? It's a living document, uh, so they have to be constantly redefined, okay? Uh, in order to when we progress or when we change, when the organization change or you know shift towards uh, the current condition, and then because right now as you know uh, the world is actually shifting. You know, uh, originally we used to use liquid natural gas, we used to use petroleum, we used to use hydrocarbon uh, derivatives, yeah, uh, to uh, fuel our engines or, you know, even to cook. But now we are going towards natural resources, you know, which is solar, which is uh, the wind and so forth. Okay, so we actually look at also uh, what is the cause of these uh, resources to be like uh, lagging? What is the gap here? Okay, and then uh, the, the social and psychological aspects were studied and then we matched it to the research questions. In our literature review, so we actually looked at four main components. Okay, uh, what are the challenges of uh, actually requiring the right talent? Yeah, the right talent, the right time for the right role. Okay, so how does proper governance actually play the role towards number one, the resource management. Okay, number two, the health, safety, security, and environment. Number three is the output. Okay, uh, okay, then number four is how can they remain competitive even in times of uh, economic crisis? Okay, so uh, skill shortages, eh? is actually a problem not just for the oil and gas industry and it has a lot to do with the aging workforce which is one of the top five barriers in any growth of any industry okay so and then we also look at the local content how to have talent on site so that nobody has to travel uh, you know in light of uh, the recent covid you know it's so difficult because you have to travel and then you're on lockdown Okay, so that's where governance play a role. Okay, and then there's the Internet of Things, how to use technology, how to use software, which is used in order to enable uh, people to work, uh, even from home. Okay, and then we're also looking at the evolution of the org chart, how it has changed. Like in the past, we have to fix org chart from start to end, but now you have the robust project based org chart. Okay, so we use the qualitative approach by uh, ground root theory. You know, we, we ask questions. Okay, so this is based on the oil and gas project sites uh, in Iraq, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and HQ in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, then um, these 13 interviews of uh, very senior people actually gave very rich data uh, to be used in, in the study, in the thesis itself. Okay, from the findings, it's actually quite interesting because what we found is that governance ni, is actually very important because they become like a shield. Okay, they are the frontliners. So when you have this, uh, like uh, other global crisis, like uh, the crash of the, world, the uh, um, oil price, and then there's COVID, and then there's war, or whatever it is. So this governance actually is a, uh, like a cushions effect. Yeah, and then it has three main rules. Number one is the enabler. So you enable the company to mold and shift. Yeah. And then number two is the shaper. Is that how you hurt the whole group 
towards like uh, the current condition. Okay, and then number three is the regulator. So I wouldn't say like a police, but more like a shepherd. Yeah, they steer the, the whole group, the whole organization towards, uh, you know, like uh, towards the better condition, the current condition. Okay, and then setting the tone in accelerating. Number one is digitization. So we have long shifted from paper-based, uh, you know, uh, working, working style, and now we are paperless. So we go into digitization. Everything is working from your laptop, from your phone, okay? And uh, you can work from home. So you don't need to travel when you work. And then automation. So when you digitize things, you get you automate everything. So you don't need to uh, reinvent the wheel or you don't need to do the work twice. So everything is like identical and then you can save time and cost. Okay, and then when you look at telemanagement, so how should the organization's talents mold into next? Yeah, how do they retool the human capital uh, in order to stay afloat? Okay, and then health, safety, security, and environment. So all this like governance becomes like a parameter fencing whereby the people are inside and they work in a very safe and happy and healthy environment. Okay, and last but not least is the technology. What are the technologies that are okay, that can be used for the long term or optimized use? So that, uh, number one, you don't buy the wrong technology. And number two, you do not uh, replicate. You do not have a duplicate of the technologies. So everybody works on the same technology and same knowledge. Okay, no matter what, the organization, uh, the industry, the world actually has to start towards digitalizing everything from the work process, from the knowledge, from the lesson learned, from the data, so everything. Okay, uh, because it is uh, it is needed for a resilient company, a resilient organization. Okay, because we need it to increase the productivity. You no longer need. 100 people to do two or three jobs. Maybe you need only four or five people when you use the software so you can save costs. Okay, and then also it has risk, no, uh, no doubt. Yeah, Technolo all technology has risk. Uh, but then with proper governance, then you can go slowly towards the uh, desired outcome. Lah. Okay, although you know it takes time. Yeah, technology, embracing technology takes time, especially for the baby boomers who are not used to tools and technology. But inshallah, you know, uh, with uh, perseverance and then if you go as a team, as one, then inshallah, it should be fine. Okay, but one disclaimer is that human intelligence can never be replaced by software. Yeah, the software can do most of the data massaging and all that, like big data. Okay, but the final thinking must be done by the human. Yeah, so that's why like certain things, uh, except for manufacturing, where you want like, uh, you like making soap or making items which is like replicable and all that stuff, that, uh, that cannot be said, uh, that can be replaced by machinery. But thinking, most of the thinking like in oil and gas needs to be done by the human. Okay, using technology, is actually the way forward lah. For if the company wants to become still, if the company wants to remain robust, wants to remain resilient and move forward, then technology is the way. Okay, so the only way is to use a unified digital platform for the whole organization, just one. So out of this study, what we can recommend is that governance should be given a wider scope to regulate the organization. This is so that you can have a unified approach and a unified outcome when it comes to digitization or optimizing the organization or optimizing the resource or whatnot. Everything will have a unified approach. For instance, uh, we give an example. If let's say the company has a president, so governance should be given the dotted line right below the president. So that, you know, they will give uh, a helicopter view of all the different business units that are in the organization. 
And so I end this presentation with some food for thought is that governance plays a very crucial role in having a dynamic resource management for the organization because it is about having the right talent at the right time from the right source at the right location and the right tools. Uh, my name is Farha and I thank you. Salam alaikum.